shocking revelations of lagos answers report what's up guys welcome back to niger trends hd the ignoble the ignoble attempt by the authorities to cover up the october 2020 um slaughtering of unharmed answers protesters at the Lekki toll plaza in lagos was recently exposed in the report of the lagos stage judicial panel of inquiry on restitution for victims of sars related abuses by submitted to um, governor babajinde sanwulu but which has since been leaked headed by doris okuwobi a retired judge and nine member panel found that there were 48 casualties of which nine were confirmed dead on the right uh, on the ninth soldier stormed the toll gate and the world watched in horror the dispersal of peaceful protesters who were weaving or who were waving the national flag and singing the national anthem to protest police brutality and extrajudicial killing the panel described the incident as a massacre in context the 309 page report provided graphic details of how the after soldiers excite exited the scene the nigerian police force followed up with the killing of the protesters shooting directly at the fleeing demonstrators who were running into shanties and the lagoon officials of the lagos state environmental health monitoring unit reportedly evacuated dead bodies and deposited them at various hospitals um various hospital uh, mortuaries in the state the report shockingly averred that some trucks with brushes underneath were brought to the lekito gate in the morning of october 21st to clean up the scene and conceal evidence this is nothing short of evil the entire saga was brutal suppression of the fundamental right of citizens to stage a peaceful protest in a bid to bring an end to the incessant killings and extortion of innocent youths by officers of the dreaded special anti-robbery squad of the police youths had taken to the streets in major cities to demand an end to police brutality Though the immediate demand of the protesters was the disbandment of SAS, they also initiated a 5 for 4 demand, calling for an increase in police salaries and a psychological evaluation of police personnel, among others. While the protests at the Lekki Toll Gate um, and Alausa were peaceful talks, some of whom were Some of whom were ferried in official government vehicles and police vans hijacked the protests in other areas, attacking demonstrators, looting and invading prisons and police stations. Sam Wolu eventually imposed a curfew on the state, but the protesters remained resolute. Before nightfall, the Lekki Concession Company which operates the toll gate on behalf of the state government turned out the light that gave the murderous soldiers and bloodthirsty police officers the cover to perpetuate the dastardly um, act while indicate indicting the llc the panel found that the firm hampered the panel's investigation by refusing to turn over some useful and vital evidence as requested even where such information and evidence was by the company's admission available, it accused the LCC of manipulating the incomplete CCTV video footage of the Lekito Gate on the 9th of October 20, 2020, which it tendered before the panel. Thankfully, some of the protesters were able to record the shootings at the Lekito Gate in real time. Apart from the LCC, the National Broadcasting Commission must also be called out for its shameful role in trying to suppress the news on the NSAS protests. 
the NBC, which has become the government's willing tool for stifling the press, find channels arise and AIT TV stations for using what it termed unverified footage of the toll gate incident, even though it was obvious that the videos were authentic and have not been discredited till today. Under the supervisory purview of a lapdog minister of information and culture, Lai Mohamed, NBC now issues fines arbitrarily under the guise of curbing fake news. This undermines the role of the media as watchdogs of society as enshrined in section 22 of the 1999 constitution which states that the press radio television and other agencies of the mass media shall at all time be free to uphold the fundamental objectives contained in this chapter and uphold the responsibility of and accountability of the government to the people for over a year several witnesses to the lekki killing came forward insisting that people were murdered at the toll gate Amnesty International estimated that at least 12 persons were killed. CNN, in a detailed investigative report, narrated how soldiers fired live bullets at protesters, but the government persisted in its denials. Mohammed persistently tried to hood, hoodwink the um, bamboozle. Uh, hoodwink and bamboozle Nigerians into thinking otherwise. He infamously dismissed um, the incident as a massacre with no bodies and scoffed at NSAS protesters with his penchant for tagging every unfavorable report as fake news. The minister endlessly adopted subterfuge to discredit the entire NSAS protest, even while the panel had yet to turn its report. After continually demonizing the protesters, he shifted his attack to Twitter until social media platform was suspended by a repressive and authoritarian regime of the President Major General Mahmoud Buhari retired. He accused the networking service of funding the Ethers protest, among others. Mohammed stated that Twitter must bear vicarious liability for the damage that ensured after hoodlums hijacked the protest. Rightly too, human rights group have now called for the sacking of Mohammed for his role in the NSAS protest. Whether now or in the future, public officials who were directly or indirectly linked to the horrors of the Lekito Gate should be made to face justice. The massacre is not only of government savagery but also of unparalleled courage on the part of the Nigerian youth who welcome soldiers murdering bullets with the national flag and then and uh, anthem while breathing their last breaths. That we certainly hope that they will never be forgotten. The dishonorably this dishonorable role played by the Central Bank of Nigeria cannot be forgotten. ZBN deviated from its statutory role of monetary policy and regulating banks to delve into policy uh, politics. Persons who played key roles in the protest by sending or receiving funds had their account frozen by the CBN on the bizarre pre pretext of terror financing. Illegally, the protesters were denied access to their accounts for 90 days until the court lifted the ban after discovering that CBN case had no substance. The CBN's disreputable conduct demonstrates how low the Apex Bank has sunk under the leadership of Godwin M. Feli. So guys, more and more and more of this. If you have any comments, leave it in the comment section. Someone said in the comment section, this report will be a difficult one to implement. Reason being that it was the government that ordered the invasion of the Lekito Gate by the soldiers and police that led to the killings. Highest government will just bring in few scapegoats and display them before the court in the name of prosecution only to kill the case there. Well, this is actually a point, but what do we do in this kind of situation? We don't think this might go unpunished because a lot of youth are really hammering on it and are following up on the issue. 
let's see how it turns out to be guys thank you very much for watching don't forget to subscribe see you next time